You know, I might have chose the worst time to record a series on how to build your own computer, given the part shortage and everything, but that's all right, we'll get through it. In this video, I have five tips, advice, warnings, hopefully to help you avoid some frustration with this process of selecting and getting your components that you need for whatever PC build maintenance thing that you are trying to do. So tip number one, the case is not last. You see a lot of advice out there says, pick your case last, that's the least important part of your entire system. Any old case will do and you don't have to worry about it. And while I understand where they're coming from, they're trying to say the components that actually go inside are more important, the first thing you really need to think about is the airflow inside of your system. Being able to properly move air across your components and out of your case is a critical factor in making sure that you have good gaming performance. So while the case might be the last thing that people say to look at, airflow is one of the top things that you need to look at. So those two are not exactly compatible. What you really need to focus on is the ability to move air throughout the case. Pick out a case towards the tail end of your component selection process and make sure that you know the kinds of fans that can go in it. There's 120s, there's 140s, there's radiators, there's AIO systems. All of them have different size components and cases don't always fit the same level of componentry. A good example of this. A thinner case, like the O11 Dynamic that I showed, has a fan placement in the back. And that's very good for a 120 millimeter fan, but it will not support a 144. Additionally, on top of the case and the bottom, it is more designed towards those 120s than it is a 140. Now, if I were to actually build a system for AIO purposes, I would go for a 280 in terms of my overall radiator, which uses two 140 sized fans, which means it wouldn't fit in the O11 dynamic. Even though that's a very popular case, it's not exactly one that is gonna mesh with all of your airflow needs. Second one, PC Part Picker has fabulous guides, good information, and is a good resource to get you some level of understanding of the parts that are out there. And in order to be able to show you, I gotta go over to a screen. Okay, this is PC Part Picker. This is actually the guide section right here if you click Build Guides. This is a great place to come if you are curious about how to build your own machine, if you're looking at what parts are kind of popular and go together very well, this is a great place to start. But where the magic really starts to happen is the system builder itself. Now I want you to choose a CPU. In this particular instance, we're going with Intel. So I'm gonna go down here, choose Intel, and we're choosing the i7 variety. You can see there's a lot of different choices that you could make, and it will automatically filter like pretty much any other shopping experience that's out there. The other thing that you have to know though is, what's the latest? Well, you can kind of see it right here. It's gonna sort it by popularity. So you can already see these are the more popular chips right now that folks are searching for. But if you happen to know the 11th series is what's out and new and available today, you can type that into this little field right here and it'll automatically filter for you. You see the standard version, the F, which does not include the integrated graphics. That means you can't plug a HDMI cable into the motherboard in order to get the motherboard to actually show you an image on your monitor. And then you have the K versions. The K is the overclocking one. It has a slightly higher boost, it has a significantly higher TDP, and it's what they call unlock, meaning you're able to change the variables, you're able to manipulate it in order to get better performance. Now the next thing that you're gonna choose here is your motherboard. And you can see it automatically filters it for you. This is one of the awesome things about PC Part Picker. As you start selecting and going along, it's going to automatically make adjustments based upon 
a lot of the selections that you have made. It's going to try to steer you in the right direction, in other words. In this particular instance, I want a Wi-Fi based motherboard. I'm going to scroll down and click that Wi-Fi 6. And then I want to sort it by price. And you can see I have a couple different options on here. The one I chose to go with is this one right here. So it's time to build an MSI build. It's a very good OEM. Lots of people have them. So I'm going to choose this motherboard right here. And I'll go into a little bit more when I actually break down the motherboard itself. And this is another thing that's awesome about PC Part Picker. It's going to tell you compatibility issues. So right here, this 11th generation CPU is newer than this motherboard. So you're going to have to update your BIOS on the motherboard in order to be able to use this chip with it. And we'll go over exactly how to do that in a future video. The other thing, you can see the price difference over the last three months right here. And you can see the prices for these two components have been pretty much stable. If you were to try to pull the GPU in here, you'll probably see a bunch of that. That's just the way the situation is right now. So leveraging a tool like this, you're able to use some knowledge, some of that build information and get everything matched up. But it's not gonna give you everything. So number three, PC Part Picker is going to typically show you Newegg and it's typically gonna show you Amazon. It's not gonna show you everything that is out there. Now, one thing that is happening right now is people are forced to get additional components in order to get GPUs or CPUs. They're forced to typically get motherboards along with a CPU, or they're forced to get power supplies with their GPU. This means there's a lot of extra parts floating around places like eBay, on Discord, and part swaps on Reddit. These are fabulous places where you can go and actually try to pick up some equipment that people didn't necessarily want. So my third piece of advice is to take your PC part picker list and then compare the general items that are in the same area. If you're looking at a gigabyte motherboard, for example, and it is a Z490, you can compare some of the different varieties that Gigabyte has, and maybe you can actually get one slightly cheaper on eBay instead of directly from Newegg or from Amazon. This can save you hundreds of dollars when it comes to actually getting the components that you're looking for. If you're able to be just a little bit flexible in the brand, you can definitely save even more money. If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegrayingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. Now, the fourth item here, you do need to balance your components. No, I'm not talking about literally physically balancing them like they're trying to do gymnastics. I'm talking about making sure that you're not buying a super high-end GPU and trying to pair that with a very low-end CPU. There is a general set of principles that you should be trying to follow. These need to be balanced in order to ensure that you're getting the best possible performance out of your gaming system. So in order to go over that, I got to go back to a screen. And this is a good little cheat sheet, if you will, of how to pair a CPU with a GPU. Now this will work with AMD as well. The naming nomenclature tends to be somewhat the same. So this is the pairing that I would recommend. If you were going for an i9 or 5900, a 5950X, I would pair that with something like a 3090 or a 3080, or as we've recently discovered, the 3080 Ti would also fit in between there. The i7, I would pair with the 3080 or the 3070. The i5, I would pair with the 3070 or the 3060 Ti. I wouldn't necessarily go down to the 3060 base version. I think the Ti version is going to give you just a little bit better performance and it's, it's kind of justifiable in my opinion. So this is how I would tend to kind of break the GPU-CPU pairing down. Lastly, 
no matter what, absolutely, positively, no matter what, do not buy a single component before you actually get the hardest one to find. I mentioned it earlier. I was able to get my GPUs off of Newegg because I bought combos. I had to do the new egg shuffle thing and that forced me into buying an extra power supply. It's something that a lot of places are trying to do, which means you could wind up having to buy an extra part, a motherboard for example, just because you want a GPU. And in this particular instance, if you don't have a motherboard already, now you've given yourself a little bit more flexibility in picking out your components because the GPU right now is the absolute hardest thing to find. Other times though, CPUs are the hardest things to find. So given the current situation and future situations, always wait to pick out any other component until after you have secured, meaning it's in your hands, the hardest to find component of the current trend. And while we are at it, if you like gaming performance content like this, go ahead and click on my face right there. That's the subscribe button. Or check out this video right here that I hand selected personally for you.